and I wanted to cover some points here about adding or drawing. You're always, I would recommend you start with the largest shape. Okay, so the largest shape in this case would be the row of houses. And because we're dealing with a little bit of perspective here, they're going to get smaller as they go away from us. Of course, this may not be the case if you're dealing with homes that are different sizes. So maybe you have a one story in front of you, a two story to the left and so on. But in this case, we have a, the main home, which is slightly off center, a two story and the other homes are a little bit smaller around it. So this happened to work out pretty good in terms of arrangement. But if it didn't, then I would make it work. I, I would always shuffle things around until I feel I have a, a design and composition that uh, works well. So again, um, you know, always start with the biggest shape, work your way down. And my philosophy is to eliminate details. Um, the more outlines, the more shapes and all that stuff you have in your drawing, uh, the more chances, the more of a chance you have of painting tight. It, it kind of becomes a coloring book where the windows, the figures, every single nook and cranny is drawn out for you. And then that's going, for me, it tightens me up. But, um, you know, you can, of course, do whatever you want. Um, I'm only sharing the ideas that work for me. So, again, if we looked at that drawing, um, I'm only focusing on the windows on that main house and the dormers on that main house because that again is my point of interest is sort of that house and with the figures coming at us uh on and up towards us uh, i guess in the crosswalk so i added the crosswalk too now when it comes to painting the piece um you can start however you like uh you can some artists like to put a wash down first to sort of tint the paper other artists like to paint the sky and then work their way down. Um, you know, I, I find that I, I don't like to get into anything that's predictable. So for this piece, I just started with the rooftop. I went around the dormers, as you can see there. And now I'm just putting in different neutrals. And the, the colors I'm using, whether they're, you know, browns or grays or whatever, I try to put it in an area, let's say of that roof. And then... I'll try to connect that color somewhere else. So here I've got a little bit of burgundy red. I'll use that red for the sidewalk. And that creates a little more harmony. You can see I'm sprinkling in that red on the rooftop, um, the windows of the main house. And again, um, that keeps the colors harmonious. It keeps the, you know, the flow of the painting harmonious and so on. Um, so I, I try not to mix any one color for any one thing when i mix a color it may be for a particular place but i'm always going to try to sprinkle it somewhere else that road looks a little bit dark there but that's okay um you have to remember watercolor is going to dry back about 30 percent um, and because i'm painting on very dry paper here um, it's going to dry back quite a bit so you always have to go a little bit darker than what you think you need and obviously when I'm painting the sky here, I'm going a little bit darker and I know it's going to bleed into the rooftops and that's perfectly fine. I look for imperfections. This first wash, I'm looking for watercolor magic. I'm looking to infuse the characteristics of watercolor painting. I talk about that a lot in my watercolor workout um, class about the characteristics of watercolor and how it wants to fuse and mingle and run. Um, that to me is the beauty of the medium. Um, and you can see here, now that it's all dry, look at how those washes run and mingle into each other. So if you try to control it, then a lot of times you, you miss out on that magic and, and the painting starts to become uh, something that you could do with acrylic or oils. And to me, I like to embrace the medium for what it what it does best and for me watercolor is an imperfect very imperfect medium and i find if you can create a painting that has the characteristics and it, and it can and it's allowed to do what it likes to do so well uh, to me it, it just adds a little extra quality to it and you know i just appreciate it okay 
So enough of that. Um, now I'm moving into more local colors. So the house is sort of a red. And again, that may go on a little bit strong at first, uh, and that's okay. It's still going to dry back a little bit lighter. And whenever I put that uh, first wash down for this house, I knew I wanted it light gray because I'm going to use that light gray for the window trim. So you have to sort of look at your paintings and your subjects sometimes and plan accordingly. Um, so if you like for me, I knew the trim was I didn't want it to be bright white because I knew it would be a little, a little distracting. So putting that light gray down first. And then knowing the whole time, I'm going to come back later on and pop it with this red burgundy. Um, this was part of the planning process. So always think about your washes. Um, you know, spend five or ten minutes and look and study your subjects and see where you know you could possibly do a lighter wash and then come back with a darker value and negative space paint, which is what I did around those windows. And that creates, again, a, a great um, way, a, another technique that's so useful with watercolor. And um, negative space painting is something that you have to master with watercolor. Um, it, it really is a, a technique you can use with any medium. But when you do it with watercolor, it just looks a little bit more interesting for some reason. But here you can see I'm adding the light and shadow now. So getting that sense of uh, three dimension and really bringing the painting to life. And this is a, a fun part of the painting, but it's also can be a little bit tedious too. Um, but again, I'm, I'm always, you know, reminding myself and mindful of where that point of interest is. Where is it that I want to go with the painting? Remember, it was that house, the figures coming at us. That was the focal point. So those are the areas that I really want to hit. And uh, <clears throat> you'll notice that the homes on the right and the left, um, they're, they don't have as much detail. I'm not spending quite as much time on them. I'm just sort of chunking them in there and, and let it go. You know, they don't really have white trim around the windows or, or anything like that. So, uh, you know, the, the key is, you know, with painting and if really with art in general, if, if you want to, you know, do things that um, that have a loose feel to them, you always have to remember that you're suggesting things. OK, we're not trying to paint them. We're just trying to suggest it, like to give enough information there that the viewer knows what it is. But there's enough abstract quality to it that it leaves a little bit of room for interpretation um, so that not everything is laid out for them. You know, they can appreciate it for what it is, but then they can sort of get up close to it and really see how the, the brushwork and the artist sort of had this carefree mindset that they're going to do something and just say, hey, you know, that's my house. It's not perfect, but you know what? It is what it is. That's that's it's fine with me. And th th there's that little layer of confidence um, that you you have to have underneath everything and that confidence doesn't come overnight it doesn't come you don't always have it either um, I know for speaking for myself there's times I lose it I do some bad paintings and the next thing you know I'm I'm sort of in this downward spiral um, but you know you have to get out of those things obviously but um, you know the best way to do that sometimes is just to grab scrap paper or an old painting and just sort of go over it and just kind of get it out of your system, you know, and and get back to painting more carefree. But, you know, make, you know, again, this this piece, OK, was done. Mostly, OK, before paint hit the paper. So the very first slideshow I shared with you about taking the image, you know, looking at it, finding those big shapes and. You know, laying out a, a value plan, this sort of big, chunky, you know, easy to, to see and paint shapes. And, you know, from there you say, OK, well, what do I need to make it more of a story? So I added the figures and you know, made it where, you know, to come to life a little bit and and 
so that when I get to this part of the painting, there's a lot more freedom. You know, if I didn't do that part of the, of the piece and I bypassed putting thought and time into designing this and uh, really making it my own, then I would be uh, painting much more timid than I am right now. So, but because I did that stage of it, um, I've got a lot more confidence because I feel like even if I lose my way throughout the painting, I have that to fall back on. So it really gives me a ton of flexibility. It gives me a ton of confidence too. And if I don't do that part of the painting, then that's where I tend to, you know, second guess myself throughout the piece. And, and you can't do that. If you do that, um, the painting is going to tell you that, you know, it's going to show. Okay, so a painting that's done with confidence and a certain carefree attitude, it shows. Okay, you don't have to tell anybody that, that the artist had that. Okay, so a painting that's done timid and the, the artist is second guessing everything, well, guess what? That shows too. Okay, you can't hide those things. I mean, that's, that's art. I mean, art is, um, it's a, you know, you're exposing not only your you know, the painting itself, but you're also exposing a little bit of what was going on at that particular moment in time. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? I mean, we, as humans, we go through different stages of life. We have different experiences every day. Some days we're more confident than others. Some days we're full of ourselves and we get in our own way. Other days we're much more relaxed and, you know, we're taking things in stride. So, that all comes out in your art it really does but i think the planning process thinking about your image uh, extracting the big shapes simplifying it getting away from all the details developing that focal point thinking about the values all that if anything it'll help you it'll give you an approach um, that you can rely on and you can fall back on if the painting starts to go south uh, when you're creating it so um, we're going to take a look at this piece here. I took a photo uh, in natural light um, so we can get a good look at the artwork. So there it is. Um, so all in all, it's not bad, but it's got a lot of magic to it. I, I think I'm you know, really happy with, with how that turned out. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, expressive qualities, but check out that value plan. I mean, isn't that very similar to what I laid out in the very beginning? I mean, that is really what I'm falling back on. I can't stress that enough. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the demo and I'll see you guys in the next one.